Hey, welcome back to my channel. We have made it to over 500 subscribers. I am so excited for us. We did that together, and I really appreciate each and every one of you. Honestly, I truly do. And if you haven't liked or subscribed or hit the notification, I am posting videos every week, and I would love for people to engage in the comments if you have any suggestions about any videos or things you might want to see, things you even liked, okay? I am here. I am open. I am ready to listen to make this channel just helpful to everyone as much as I can. So without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so this is areas of clinical focus. This is the information from tax.com. And uh, we are going to go through as many as we can. This area is one of the biggest um, sections in the NCE. So the first question is, or statement is, you are meeting with Glenda, a nurse who is struggling with her supervisor and her performance. You come to know that her supervisor is relatively new in management, but has been in the clinical field helping patients in direct care for the past 20 years. You believe that people are attracted to particular jobs to have a to have particular personality traits. Your thinking is in line with which career there is. Okay. So which of these theories do you feel or do you know at this time? Okay, so what do we know about Brill, A.A. Brill? So we know that A.A. Brill, he talks about the fact that we choose our careers based on unresolved conflict, right? So we're looking for keyword, have particular personality traits, and are attracted to particular jobs, right? So it wouldn't be A. A. Brill. So we have Anne Rowe. Anne Rowe, what do you remember that she talks about? If you guessed it right, you have guessed that she does unmet needs. And that intelligence is a primary factor of genetics. So, for example, if my mom's a doctor, then I will be intelligent enough to have a doctor. Well, to be a doctor. Okay. Next, we have Holland. We have John Holland. So, he talks about the personality traits. And that we choose our jobs based on our particular characteristics. In, with particular jobs. So if you haven't guessed it already, <laughs> it's going to be Holland because Maslow, he's not a career theorist, right? He talks about the hierarchy of needs. Okay, let's go to the next one. A Muslim woman shares with a counselor that her boss is pressuring her not to wear her hijab to work because it makes the other employees and customers feel uncomfortable. The counselor agrees with her boss and tries to convince the client of the benefits of assimilating into American culture. The counselor actions, A, is egotistical, B, culturally sensitive, or C, unethical, or B, or D, empathetic. So if you think of A, egotistical, Right. Um, thinking about yourself, like if you tell someone you're so egotistical, right? But we're not looking at the person singing to themselves, um, being like being better than the other person. We're talking about a behavior in a professional work setting, right? So we can we can kind of leave egotistical there. Uh, do you feel like this will be culturally sensitive? Okay, nope, definitely not culturally sensitive if you're thinking about someone saying that this individual should wear, take off their hijab because it makes um, them feel uncomfortable. And then we have C, unethical. 
So we will definitely say this is unethical. The council actions are unethical and it's definitely not empathetic. So if you had to choose, which one would you choose? If you chose the answer C, unethical, you are completely correct. According to PHA's stages of moral development, a child younger than the age of 10 will think which of the following is worse? A, someone who's trying to help his mother set the table and broke five dishes. B, someone who is stealing a cookie from the cookie jar when he wasn't allowed and knocked over a cup that broke. C, someone who do not control the dog who jumped on the table and pulled down a glass of full water, which broke. D, someone who accidentally dropped a dinner knife, which could have hurt someone if, it, if they would have stepped on it. Now I'll give you a second to try to guess because it's really lengthy. And then I'll give you 10 seconds, 10 seconds, and then we'll go over it. Let's see what the answer is. So it's A, someone who is trying, who was trying to help his mother set the table and broke five dishes. So the key word here in this statement is a child younger than age 10. So if you look at PJ's um, level of more development, then of moral judgment anyway, um, the age gives you a key breakaway because a person under the age of, younger than the age of 10 is going to think about how their parents will feel, right? So they will have the views of what their parents feel um, is important. So someone who was trying to help his mother set the table and broke five dishes, right? because then he will be in the consequences of his mother. And the whole point is to not face consequences um, under that age of 10. Okay. A mother of a teen age boy who you are counseling calls with concern Recently, her son has seen withdrawn and unhappy. Today, she found out he gave his favorite video game system to his best friend. She asks if you have time to see him today and you make room in your schedule that afternoon. What is the main concern here? A, behavior is consistent with suicide. B, complicated friendships. C, depression. And D, overthinker. All right, let's give you some time to get to that. Now, if you chose A, behavior is consistent with suicide, you are correct. So we're not looking at complicated friendships because he um, is giving away his favorite game system to his best friend. So it's not conflict there. Depression, you could say depression, but depression typically does not have the symptoms of giving away stuff, more so than does behavior consistent with suicide because you want someone to take care of your stuff while you're gone and you're just giving away your personal belongings because you know you're never going to need them again, right? An uh, overprotective mother. Um, no, well, overprotective means overbearing, unnecessary um, watch and concern. So here is a valid concern. And she, the mom is reaching out to the counselor to get additional assistance, right? When Jan was 14 years old, she volunteered after school as a candy striper at the hospital. The summer of her junior year, Jan became a phlebotomist at the hospital part time. Senior year, Jan 
applies and is accepted into a nursing program at a local university. According to Ginsburg, Ginsburg, Axelad, and Hermes theory, Jan is in the realistic stage of her vocational development, but has entered the sub stage of. We have A, fantasy, B, tentative, C, crystallization, D, specification. Okay, if you chose specification, you are correct. So if we look at the answer explanation, the realistic stage mid adolescence to young adulthood has three sub stages. The exploration stage where adolescents are being beginning to narrow down their vocational choices based on their likes, skills and attitudes. And its crystallization stage and occupational choice is made in the specification stage, the individual will pursue the necessary training or education in order to achieve their particular career goal. Okay. So you can also think of like um, the different stages that Ginsburg talk about, like the upside down triangle and the lower you get, the more direct, the or more the more pointy the triangle is, right? And it's specified that way. A math professor has a meeting with an Asian student regarding her low math grades and makes the comment, I don't understand why your grades are so low. I would expect math to come naturally for you. The student just experienced A, racial microaggression, B, historic hostility, C, transference, and D, positive regards. Okay. So what we know about racial microaggression? Well, racial microaggressions can happen in everyday life. Racial microaggressions are brief and, comp and commonplace daily verbal um, racist comments and acts. Now we look at historical hostility. So historic hostility may function as a psychological factor in the lives of African Americans in the United States. It is a pattern of responses that many African American exhibit, which may stem from prolonged racism. Okay. Then we have C, which is transference. Transference happens when the client transfers their fears onto or their emotional feelings. It can be positive or negative onto therapists. Positive regard is being able to, and it's related to Carl Rogers, right? He says having positive regard means to be able to express empathy, show support, and accept this as someone regardless of what they say or do, right? No judgment, in a sense. Blank is defined as one's work and leisure that take place over a lifespan. So the key word here is lifespan, okay? If you think of a job, definition of a job is like, what is your role, right? What do you know about profession? So profession is a paid occupation, right? Especially one that involves prolonged training and formal qualification, right? His chosen profession of teaching, for example, right? So you think of professional training, professional development. Yes. 
Then you have career. Career is something that happens over a span of time, and which will lead you to the answer here. Okay. If you want to look at occupation, if you want to look at occupation, is more so a person's regular work or profession or job or principal activity. So if you can think of it as an occupation, maybe I work in maintenance, but what, what do I do in maintenance that I specialize in, right? So maybe my job would be I'm an expertise at being a plumber. Right. So occupation can mean like a general sense of a, a, a actual career that you have. In terms of personal development and Maslow, which of the following is false? Let me read that again. In the terms of personal development and Maslow, which of the following is false? A, people are always becoming and never static in these terms. People sometimes fluctuate between levels with life circumstances. C, most people reach self-actualization in their lifespan or lifetime. Or D, self-esteem needs are far removed from self-actualization or actualized levels. Now, if you chose C, most people reach self-actualization over and in their lifetime. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. Karen worked as a Wall Street trader for 10 years after graduating and then quit working to raise a family. Now that her children are in school, she is interested in returning to the workforce. She has started taking classes to pursue a master's degree in art. As a career choice or as a career counselor practicing super theory, what technique might you use to help Karen understand her role variations. A, Johari window. B, career life rainbow. C, self-directed search. And D, strong entrance inventory. So what do you know about Johari Window? So Johari Window is a framework for understanding conscious and unconscious biases that can help increase self-awareness and our understanding of others. So we're looking for super theory. If we already know what super theory is, you should be able to figure it out. If not, we're gonna go through this together. The strong interest inventory. What theories do we know who has a strong interest inventory? If you guess John Holland, you are correct. Um, so C, self-directed search assessment. Okay, that's part of John Holland as well, right? So SDS is a career assessment and exploration tool that matches your client's aspirations, activities, talents to the career choices and educational opportunities that fit them. Okay. And self directed search means that you can just take this by yourself, right? And search for what your, what your personality trait says about you, whether you are a realist, an artist, et cetera. And you don't have to pay for it because it's free and it's accessible and you get your results right away. So now we have B, career life rainbow, right? And that will be Donald Super. Okay. Hmm. 
two divorced adults with minor children from prior relationships married to form one family. What is this new family referred to as? A, a step family, B, a complex family, and C, a binuclear family, or D, all the above? If you have guessed all the above, then you are right. These are just terms that are used interchangeably to explain like additions to the family, uh, merging of family members. In your session, your client shares, I love to sing, but I'm afraid to when I'm in front of an audience. What if I sound terrible? What is your client's current mental state? A, are they in spiritual, existential mental state? B, manic mental state? C, fear and anxiety mental state? Or D, aggressive mental state? Now with A, is this person looking for a reason, like a, a, a meaning to live or um, a reason to exist, right? Reevaluating values and beliefs? Nope. Right, that's like logotherapy, existentialism, right? Victor Frankl, Rolla May. So we're not talking about that. So then we have B, manic mental state. This person is not in a manic state um, with erratic thinking and, in, and the other symptoms of the manic state. D, we're going to skip over C. Uh, D is aggression mental state. This person does not display aggression from this question and the statement. And so we're going to go with fear and anxiety. Why? Because this individual is worried about how they will be perceived, how they looked, um, if they mess up. So they have this self-defeating, um, self-sabotaging behavior um, which they ruminate about this thing over and over and over again. Okay. And the strong, well, the strong interest inventory builds upon which theorist model? A, Hebbinghurst. B, Holland. C, Rowe. Or D, Parson. Okay. Now, what do you know about having hers? So having hers states an individual must successfully achieve the following eight developmental tasks during the adolescence period, which includes accept one's body, adopt a masculine or feminine social role, achieve emotional independence from parents, develop close relationship with peers of the same and opposite gender. And then prepare for an occupation, prepare for marriage, family, life, establish a personal value or ethical system, and achieve socially responsible behavior. Okay. And this occurs between 12 age 12 to 18 years of age. So we're not looking at um, an evaluation, um, SDS, right? With John Hop. Ooh, I just told you what it was. <laughs> um, so let's just go ahead and just click on it and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so it's Holland, right? We just went over that the last one. Um, we have Amber. We talked about her last time. It was um, unmet needs and genetics of intelligence and choosing an occupation. And then we have Frank Parson, father of vocational guidance. Um, he wrote the book of choosing a vocation where he was one of the first individuals to talk about um, multicultural um, issues and how other people had accessibility to certain jobs based on culture and race, okay? Which of the following is a form of learning in which familiarity is indicated? Indic oh, why can't I say no word? 
by a reduced response indicated by a reduced response. So let's read that again. Which of the following is a form of learning in which familiarity is indicated by a reduced response? So we're looking for keyword reduced response. And another key one is a form of learning. Okay. So we have A, inhabituation. B, dishabituation. C, novelty preference. And D, habituation. Okay. Let's choose our answer here. And it'll be habituation. You can also substitute that with habit, right? If you do something for so long, it becomes a habit. And sometimes you don't even know you're doing it. It's just like, oh, wow. Like, think about when you drive home and you go the same way all the time. And you all of a sudden, you don't even know how you got home. Thank goodness you made it home. Because that's kind of scary. But it happens to all of us, right? Because out of habit, our mind and the body is trained to get on, like, on automatic. And all of a sudden, you're home. <laughs> all right. Which of the following is true with regards to bullying? A, there is an abundance of power in a bullying situation or imbalance of power in a bullying situation. B, the victim has also been a bully. C, the adults at school have the greatest ability to stop bullies. Or D, the majority of bullying happens face to face. We are going to go with A, right? There is an imbalance of power in a bullying situation, right? You have the child who is more vulnerable, typically a smaller child or a child who uh, has like possible insecurities or don't feel like they can defend themselves. And you have the bully who is in the power and control of that situation and inter, um, interaction with the other individual. You run into a friend and she has her three month old baby girl in a stroller. You bend down to peek at the and the baby looks at you and begins to cry. What stage of psychosocial development is this baby in? Okay. Autonomy versus shame. So autonomy is free will. And then shame is shame, right? Uh, B, initiative versus guilt, right? Initiative is like doing something on your own, exploring, right? And doing things for the first time. Then you have C, trust versus mistrust, right? Or would you trust that every time you cry, you need to be mad? Or if not, then you learn to mistrust. Intimacy versus isolation. Intimacy is intimate relationships, but it doesn't have to be sexual. Just having a deep connection with someone that you don't have with anyone else. And then isolation occurs if you're not able to have that intimacy and you feel alone, right? Think of the I, I feel alone in isolation. So if you bend down to peek at the baby and the baby starts to cry, then what do you, which one of these would you think it'll be? If you chose trust versus mistrust, you are correct. You might have a baby that wants nothing to do with you until they are able to trust you, and then they'll feel more comfortable with you. What you're going to follow me is not a type of play identified by part team. You have structured. Cooperative. And then you have onlooker. Okay. Now, if you chose structured, because it's not a type of play, we're looking at keyword, not a type of play, then you have the answer structured. So if we want to go over the three types that Mildred parting discuss, she indicated that non-social and unoccupied, solitary, and onlooker, 
And the three types were categorized as social play, which is parallel, associative, associative and cooperative. Okay. Next one. Which of the following would likely not, keyword, not be the results of incomplete adolescence brain development? A, forgetting an appointment. B, plan to complete a major project in two days. C, backmouthing authority figures. D, leaving for school but returning home after a parent has left for work for four or five days two weeks in a row. Now, I'll let you try to look at this and think about it. So A, forgetting an appointment. B, planning to complete a major project in two days. C, back mouth and authority figures. And D, leaving school but returning home after a parent has left for work for four of five days, two weeks in a row. Which of these is an indicator of an incomplete adolescent brain? If the answer is going to surprise you here, it's going to be C, back mouth and authority. This would not, likely not, be the result of an incompetent adolescent brain. Why? Because there's people, there are people now who are adults and older, you know, who still curse out the police officer and still say what they want to say. So that is not an ind indicator of an incomplete adolescent brain development. Sadie is almost one year old and is able to stand on her own. She wants to take a step forward, but is reluctant. Sadie's dad holds his arms out and encourages Sadie by clapping and smiling and telling her that she can do it. This is an example of A, behavior modification, B, positive regard, C, extension and D, exposure. Okay. So if you chose positive reinforcement, you are correct, right? The positive, the positive reinforcement will be what the um, dad clapping and smiling and telling her she can go to do it, right? That's that positive reinforcement, okay? Let's see, next one. A parent complains to an eight-year-old, when you behave and do good, mom and dad are happy to reward you. But when you behave badly, we must punish you because parents are supposed to discipline their children. Which stage of Colbert's moral development are the parents attempting to represent? A, transcendental morality, B, post-conventional morality, C, conventional morality, and D, pre-conventional morality. Okay. If you chose D, pre-conventional morality, you have chosen correct. So if you look at the Kohlberg's moral development, he has how many, how many stages, how many levels, right? So he has three levels, six stages, because each level has two stages. And pre-conventional is for children under the age of seven who are more concerned about not being punished by their parents, right? They want to make sure that they do something and they get rewarded for that in a sense because they they're doing something good and so their parents want to keep you know keep them doing that and so they want to make sure that we get something out of it at that age right so you have the pre-conventional then you have conventional is when the child is more concerned about socially fitting in societal standards and the concern comes with not being punished by authority figures. 
not their parents at this stage, right? And so it could be teachers, police, anybody that's not in the, not in the same authority figure as their parents. And then when you get to post-conventional, post-conventional is when you have your own moral standards, right? You no longer care about what your parents think. You no longer care about what society thinks. You have your own um, judgments and you go by how you feel when you do make those judgments in your life. And Colbert also states that not a lot of people get to this level of um, post-conventional because clearly we're too concerned about what society and our parents feel we should do. Emily's mother, according to Emily, has been very self-critical and self-centered and absorbed all her life. Emily's mother, Emily's mother comes to stay with Emily for two weeks. Emily gives up her bed for her parents and sleeps on the couch. She openly shares her food with them and takes them to dinner one night while here. About halfway through their stay, Emily's mother goes into a rage and tells Emily that she's selfish and unappreciative. Emily is shocked. You help Emily understand that her mother is most likely exhibiting the ego defense mechanism of. We have A, projecting. D, displacement. C, progression. And D, rationalization. All right. Now, if you chose projection, you are correct. Projection means to project your internal dialogue or internal, internal cognitive thoughts onto someone else, right? Like imagine a projection board, you're projecting that picture that you're feeling for yourself onto someone else. Displacement is transferring one's own emotional burden or emotional reaction from one entity to another, right? So maybe you get into a fight with somebody at work and then you go home and you might take that anger out on someone else, right? Uh, then you have regression, right? Regression is a defense mechanism in which we um, involves like the psychosexual stages of development, a reaction to an overwhelming external problem or internal conflict. Um, so you might think a child might go back to a child. I mean, a child might go back to like a, a younger age, or maybe an adult might go back to a younger age of a child where they might bed wet or suck their thumb. Um, you think of regression as like moving backwards in a mental age, right? You could be an adult, but if you're triggered, you might have those same kind of symptoms that you had when you experienced trauma as a child. Regression may arise from a desire to reduce anxiety and feel psychologically safe. So you're doing like self, self cooling or self, um, and I don't know why I can't think of the word, but self like coping mechanism is what you're doing here. Rationalization is trying to rationalize what is going on in the sense that it, it makes sense to you. It's a reaction someone might have after they make a decision, have a thought, or engage in a specific behavior. In the aftermath of this choice, though, they may construct a reason that explains why they did certain things or felt specific ways. So rationalizing why you did what you did and how you felt how you felt. Angelica has decided to quit smoking. She is committed to giving up her cigarettes, but she hasn't figured out how she's going to handle her cravings or what she is going to do when the girls at work ask her to go out and smoke. According to Proshaka's and De Clemente stages of change model, Angelica is currently in what stage? A, pre-contemplation. B, action, C, preparation, and D, contemplation. Okay.
Now let's look at what the answer is. Preparation, right? So at this stage, she's thinking about what could possibly happen and how can I prepare for that and responding to that, right? What preventative measures can I also do in, in order to prepare for that possibility that might happen? Okay. All right. Go to the next one. Which of the following will be the best focus for clients who have both been married before and who are now in couples counseling prior to getting married? We have B, things they did wrong in their first marriage. A, that divorce rates are higher for second marriages. C, what their ex-spouses think about their up-and-coming nuptials. Or D, creating expectations both partners view as reasonable. So which of the following will be the best focus for clients who have both been married before and who are now in couples counsel prior to getting married? If you chose D, creating expectations both partners view as reasonable. Yes. Before entering into a second marriage, it is important for each partner to have a chance to discuss expectations for themselves, their partners, and the marriage. Okay. The Occupational Outlook Handbook covers all the following except, okay? And also keep in mind that the NCE exam will not have these kind of words like except, all the above, have more than one answer, any kind of deceiving like words. It will not have them on the test, but it's also good to um, go over this these things so you can understand like what those options might be because they might come up again in another question and statement. So let me read that again. The Occupational Outlook Handbook covers all of the following except A, job outlook, B, places to get training, D, salary pay for an occupation, and D, training required. Okay. All right, let's look at the answer. So yes, places to get training. Okay. The OOC is comp is a comprehensive resources or a comprehensive resource for those considering particular careers. It does not outline or endorse specific training sites. However, that would be nice. That would be nice, but in a perfect world, who knows how that might look? It'd be confusion all over the place. <laughs> All right. Which of the following there is is not a decision there is in career counseling? We have Gillette. We have Heavy Hearse. We have Cats. We have Hershen. I don't know why I would say this person's name. Hershen Sun. <laughs> Hershen Sun. Okay. Which there is is not a decision. Theorists and career counseling. Okay, let's look at the answer. Okay, so we have having hers. Having hers was an adult developmental theorist who combined the term teachable moment and identified the focus of adulthood, having developmental tasks, including getting started in an occupation. And so we also talked about having hers prior, right? And he talked about the um, the various developmental tasks, and he has a total of eight of those, right? We said the one is to accept body, accept one's body. Um, two, adopt a masculine or feminine social role. Three, uh, achieve emotional independence from parents. Uh, four, develop close, develop close relationships with peers of the same opposite sex. Five, prepare for an occupation. 
Six, prepare for marriage and family life. And seven, establish a personal value or ethical system. And eight, achieve socially responsible behavior. Did not have the answer for that one, but we're going to still rock with this one. <laughs> Which of the following is in the correct order of broad, meaning wider, right? Covers more span to specific, right? Something more detailed for la laser focus. Classification of employment. We have A, job, occupation, career. B, occupation, job, career. C, career, job, occupation. And D, career, occupation, job. Okay. If you chose D, career, occupation, and job, you are correct. Okay. So career is the most broad category. And it includes a person, person's accumulated work and leisure. Occupation is less broad than career as it can assume similar jobs occupied by multiple people. Multiple people. Job is the most specific as it gives a position in an organization. One of the key themes in Milgram's research is that obedience blank when the distance between the teacher and the learner blank. A, decreases, decreases. B, decreases, increases. C, increases, decreases. And D, increases, increases. So, one of the key themes in Milgram's research in, is that obedience decreases when the disturbance between the teacher and the learning or the distance between the teacher and the learner decreases. Okay. In his touchy proximity condition, Milgram had his teacher participants hold the learner's hand on the shock plate. He found that the obedience was much less in this condition, demanding that decreasing the distance between the teacher and the learner decreases obedience. Okay. The adjustment theory suggests older adults taking higher emotional satisfaction as they age begin to be more selective. I can relate to that. Um, A, activity theory, B, disengagement theory, C, contuity theory, or D, socio-economic, uh, what's going on with my, my language? Socio-emotional selectivity theory, say that five times fast. So the adjustment theory suggests older adults seek higher emotional satisfaction as they age by being more selective is A, active theory, B, disengagement theory, C, continuity theory, D, social emotional selectivity theory. If you chose D, socio emotional selectivity theory, you are correct. You're being more selective about who you want around you. And that is also when you choose certain people, right? Because you want to have more peace in your life. You want to make things more enjoyable, right? Think about the company you keep, okay? Which theorists believe that sublimation was the only, well, which theorists believe that sublimation was the method by which we choose our careers? Okay, we have Bandura, A, Ginsburg, B, Brill, C, and then we have D, Rowe. So if you know one of these theories already, or even more than that, who can we rule out? We have Anne Rowe, she talks about unmet needs. Okay, then we have A.A. A. Brill. 
He indicates that we choose those careers because of unresolved com unresolved conflict, right? Then we have Ginsburg. What do we know about Ginsburg? Okay, so Ginsburg, he says, occupational choice is not a single decision, but takes a developmental process, which, which takes place over a period of 10 or more years, right? So your career that you have now can change within a period of 10 or more years. Then we have Bandur. He assumes that people are the product of a dynamic interaction between external and um, external environment factors, internal subjectivity factors, as well as the past and present. Okay. He says career development theory studies paths towards improving professional growth, right? Um, career trajectory and overall job satisfaction. So we just went over all four. But which one of these theories talks about sublimation? A. A. Brew. So if you think of unresolved conflict, right? So maybe like you think of sublimation, you think of substitute. Like what are we substituting for? If we have unresolved conflict, you could think of even just being a therapist, right? There are there's a pattern. Therapists typically tend to be wounded warriors, right? And that's what um. I, uh, what was it? Uh, one of the existential theories talks about in regards to being a wounded warrior. And these people make the best counselors because we have that unresolved conflict and we want to do something to sublimate that by helping other people. Okay. But also keep in mind that sublimation is also a way of defense in a sense right of how we can substitute like baby someone who likes to fight all the time and then they substitute that with being a boxer that's more morally acceptable okay so you're doing something that's not desired socially and then you change that into doing something that you can still do the activity but it's morally accepted okay jenna is a 24-year-old female who sought counseling because she is lonely. She shares she has trouble forming and maintaining friendships. When making small talk in a social setting, she consistently is looking for signs that the person may not approve of her. This is an example of A, fear of intimacy, B, rejection and sensitivity. C, universality. Or D, introversion. Okay. So key word here. She has, she's lonely, right? You can also think of um, intimacy versus isolation, right? This will fit into Eric Erickson's a stages of social development, psychosocial development, right? Um, rejection sensitivity. It doesn't say that she was rejected, but she does have a fear um, of rejection. So it could be B, also could be A. Universality, we're not talking about like having the sameness or like um, one, you know, one universal understanding. In the sense, and introversion, we're not talking about that, right? So if you had to choose, I'll give you some time. Right. The key word here, why I was so close with fear of intimacy, is that this part, this person, right, this part right here, this just screams rejection sensitivity. Yeah. Rejection sensitivity is a type of relational anxiety that disrupts a person's social life. The uncertainty of meeting a new person leads Jenna to look for signs that the person will reject her. Okay.
In human development theory, development is defined as systematic changes in an individual that occur between A, life and death, B, conception and death, C, infancy and adulthood, D, children and elderly. Okay. Need some time to think this through. Make sure you use the process of elimination. Look at what the keywords are in here. We're looking at human growth development. Um, and we're looking at how is systematic changes defined. And when and, and that occurs in an individual between. So when does this systematic change occur? All right, if you chose B, conception and death, right? Soon as you have conception, automatically is the development, right? That's the beginning of the process. Human development theory is a study of human beings from their conception to their death, including the transitions and variables that influence the direction and outcome of their development. Which of the following are not signs of a of healthy adolescence development? Let me read that again. Which of the following are not signs of healthy adolescent development? A, certainty about sex role and identity. B, extremely obedient. C, challenges adult authority. And D, has plans for the future. So we're looking at what are not signs of a healthy adolescent development. Will we say A, certainty about sex role and identity? No. Let's jump over to C, challenges about uh, challenges adult authority? Nope, right? Has plans, and D, has plans for the future. So if you had to choose, would you choose extremely obedient? Would you choose A, C, or D? Extremely obedient. Certainty about sex role and identity, challenging adult authority, and having plans for the future are all markably healthy identity. Being overly obedient implies parents and society continue to dictate their behavior, right? You might have really strict rules. You have to do things a certain way, right? You have, you're going to probably have like a, a helicopter parents or authoritative parents, right? This psychiatrist believes that birth order has an influence on personality development. Personality development. So we have Carl Jung. He talks about collective conscious consciousness. He talks about the personality type, which I call P A A. So P A A S S. Um, persona, anima, animus, and then we have self and shadow. We have Sigma Freud, psychosexual stages, topographical construct using the iceberg, right? Alfred Adler talks about organ inferiority, birth order, um, the need for children to be connected. He's an um, individual psychologist. Then we have Albert Atlas. Albert Atlas, he talks about REBT, rational. Um, Let's go over it. So, rational emotive behavioral therapy. Make sure I said that right. Okay. So, which one of these uh, believes birth order? And I just used that keyword has an influence on personality. And if you guessed good old Alfred Adler, you are right. Alfred Adler believed that personality development is extremely influenced by one's birth order, the place order where an individual lies among siblings within family. Alfred Adler believed that the birthplace order determines family roles and influence relationships and interaction between parents and siblings. Arlo is too blank as Lorenz is too blank. So, what do we know about Harry Harlow? So, Harry Harlow had the experiment with the monkeys, right? 
the terry cloth and the wire monkey. Lawrence, he talked about aggression and imprinting. Okay. So Harlow is too blank as Lawrence is too blank. A, temperament and attachment. B, attachment and temperament. C, bonding and then attachment. D, attachment and bonding. If you chose D, attachment and bonding, you are right. Okay. Harry Harlow worked with monkeys and focused his research on attachment studies. Harry Harlow removed infant monkeys from their mothers and placed them on either a cloth wire or a regular wire mother substitute. He found that infant monkeys stayed close to the terry cloth monkey for perceived comfort over the wire mother, which proved nourishment. His work was influenced by the earlier work of Conrad Lawrence, who studied imprinting in birds um, and found that birds will bond with the first moving thing they see upon birth. Don has recently changed jobs for the first time in his 30-year career. He was not sure if it was the right decision to leave his former company and he had significant regret in the first three months of his new job. Now that he's been there for a year, he feels like he's settling in and has made a couple suggestions for improvement to his supervisor. According to Tideman, Don is in the blank stage of stage adjusting to choice. Okay, so according to Tideman, Don is in the blank stage adjusting to a choice. We have A, induction, B, re, re I can't even talk, B, reformation, <laughs> C, integration, D, clarification. Okay, now if you chose integration, you are correct, right? Because at first he was skeptical, he uh, regretted, you know, the new job, but now he's integrating, merging in with the company, having the same kind of um, understanding and, and wants the success for the company, right? Don is an integrating phase of time is adjusting to a choice phase. The newness of his job has worn off. He has established a relationship with his peers, and he is at some point providing feedback about the job to his supervisor. Of the following choices, who demonstrates the least? And this is another word that's not going to be on the exam, like least, but we're going to go with this because this is all a learning activity. Of the following choices, who demonstrates the least risk for depression? A, Victor, who believes that his team will lose if he forgets his lucky socks. B, Abigail, who believes that she can earn an A in math if she studies hard and does her homework. C, Matt, who believes he is going to win the lottery soon. D, Carissa, who believes that fate is going to lead her to her future husband. Okay. If you chose B, so the reason why you chose B um, for Abigail, because she believes that if she studies, she's going to get an A. But what's going to happen if she doesn't get an A, right? Um, a, uh, Victor, who believes that his team will lose, he already expects that he might forget it, right? Um, and that's a possibility. We have Matt, who believes he's going to win the lottery. So even though he might not win today or the next day or the next day, but he still believes that he can win, even if he fails. And then D, Carissa, who believes that fate is going to lead her to her future husband. Who knows how long that's going to take and how many people she dated or whatever the case is, but she understands that at some point she, she will get there, right? Abigail here has no, um, no option of failure. And that's what the biggest thing is here. The four developmental domains included in the study of human development are A, death, dying, past life regression, and contentment. 
B, sexuality, intimacy, menopause, and gender roles. C, biological, cognitive, social, and emotional. D, intellectual, personality, cultural, and moral. So the four developmental domains included in the study of human development, which one did you choose? Yes, biological, cognitive, social, and emotional, okay? The four major areas of human development are biological development, cognitive development, social development, and emotional development. The area of moral development has been extensively studied and is, has a significant area and is a significant area of human development, but is not included as one of the four major areas of human development. So just remember, out of all of that, just remember that the four major areas of human development are biological development, cognitive development, social development, and emotional development. Nicole is involved in Alcoholics Anonymous. Every few months, she and her husband attend a couple's weekend with a program that runs from Friday evening through Sunday afternoon. This will be considered a T group. It's A, and then B, a therapy group, E, encounter group, and D, marathon group. Okay. Now, from what I know, a T group is a training group right? An employment situation where you have employees come in and train for whatever they need to train for, whether it's communication or how to use some kind of information or maybe even new hires, right? A therapy group is a more intense group where you will have individuals who have personality um, deficits, right? Um, personality disturbances, shall I say, and they are very much um, symptomatic, right? What do you know about an encounter group? An encounter group is a group of people who meet to gain psych psychological benefit through close contact with one another, right? So maybe you have someone go to a day program and you want them to get that encounter group experience because you want them to be around other people they can engage with. And you can think of the encounter as engage, right? All right, then we have a marathon group. You can think of marathon if you know what a marathon is. Some people do, some people don't, but that's okay. So going through trials lasts over a couple of days um, and it can go for a very, very long time. If you had to choose, which one would you choose here? D, a marathon group. So this, this the statement says, attend a couple's weekend with the program that runs from Friday all the way to Sunday afternoon. America, a marathon group by its definition of lasting more than a few hours, right? We just said a T group is 12 to 15 members that focus on specialized training, right? Like employment. A therapy group typically has six to eight people. It's formal and structured process. An encounter group can be eight to 200 members with specified and open-ended format. An evolutionary principle that creates a predisposition towards disturbing or distrusting anything or anyone unfamiliar or is different. Let's read that again. An evolutionary principle that creates a predisposition towards distrusting anything or anyone unfamiliar or different is A, implicit egotism, D, adaptive conservatism, C, prejudice, and D, discrimination. So A, implicit, implicit egotism, it reflects like the unconscious process that's grounded in, in people's favorable self-associations. Okay. So people who people should gravitate towards others who resemble them because similar other um, people can produce positive automatic associations about themselves. So pretty much gravitate towards those other people that look like you. Okay. And then you have adaptive conservatism. 
Okay. So adaptive conservatism is the integration of project and program design. We're not talking about that, but that's adaptive management, but we're looking at adaptive conservative conservatism. Okay. If we don't know that, let's skip that one. We're going to leave that on the burden for a second. We talk about prejudice. Then we talk about discrimination. Let's see what it is, and then we'll go to some explanation here. So adaptive conservatism. Let's get some explanation. So let's not give one, so let's just go into more detail. Okay. I'm going to give a good definition, so let's talk about it. So adaptive conservatism is an evolutionary principle that creates a predisposition towards anything, right? So pretty much negative behavior towards members of an out group. So maybe I'll have a, a um, an adaptive conservatism towards like meeting new people or meeting someone who doesn't share the same culture or race as myself, right? Okay. Which of the following is not one of Super's five vocational developmental tasks? You have A, conformity, B, crystallization, C, specification, and D, stabilization. Okay. And if you chose conformity, you are correct. This is not. One of Super's five vocational developmental tasks. Okay, the five development, the five vocational development tasks areas are crystallization between ages fourteen and eighteen, adolescents formulate general vocational goals through awareness and drawing from a variety of influential resources. Specification is two. Uh, ages eighteen to twenty-one. Young adults seek stability by moving from tentative vocational preferences to more specific vocational or career goals. Then you have three, inflammation, which is 21 and 24. Young adults will complete training for vocational preferences in order to develop a specific skill set to gain entry into career or employment. Then you have this one, stabilization, 24 to 35. Adults will conform and commit to a career or vacation choice, utilizing their talents to perform that job and gain work experience over a period of time. We have consolidation, age 35 and up, a period where an adult has established a career by gaining experience, status, advancement, and seniority. David is obsessed with doing all he can to interrupt the gay rights movement. Unconsciously, however, David has sexual attraction to his best friend and roommate. This is A, compensation, B, sublimation, C, rationalization, and D, reaction formation. So there are a couple of words that we went over already. Sublimation means what? The substitute. Something. So even whether it's something socially negative and you substitute that, maybe boxing, right? Maybe you're fighting a lot, they'll substitute that. You can substitute that for something morally accepted, like boxing, right? Um, it's pretty much like trading in something, um, right? Then you have rationalization. We talked about that, like rationalizing a situation, making sense of your thoughts and your behaviors. Compensation um, means to what? So compensation means to typically the act or state of compensating as by rewarding someone for service. Um, and that's like money, right? But if you look at the psychology term, okay, what would that look like? 
So it's a type of defense mechanism, right? In which people overachieve in one area to compensate for a failure in another, right? Maybe you, maybe you have a guy that goes to the gym and he works out and gets all these muscles, but when he goes to work, he's treated like he's a nobody. So maybe he goes to the gym to overcompensate to feel power. Okay. Reaction information, we have not talked about that yet, but we'll talk about it. So if you had to choose, if you didn't know what D was, if you knew what all these other ones were, which one would you choose? Reaction formation. The reaction formation is doing something to yourself that you wish you could do to other people, right? So David is obsessed with doing all he can to interrupt the game movement, right? But he's doing that to other people in this in this situation, right? Um, yeah, so reaction formation is exhibit when the individual expresses the opposite feeling and emotion or impulse of that which causes anxiety. So he's kind of def like in a sense deflecting or he's um, trying to take the attention off himself and reduce that anxiety by saying, oh, I'm not gay, I'm not this, I'm not that, and, you know, interrupts the gay right, but at the same time, he still has this attraction. So it's like trying to cover up your feelings and account for it to make it look believable that you don't feel the way you do. A willful woman decides to become a lawyer because of her tendency to be outspoken and hard-headed in relationships, including those in the workplace. She is displaying rationalization, A, B, sublimation, C, suppression, D, displacement. Okay, if you had to choose based on the information that we've already went over, except for suppression, right? What do we know about suppression? Think about it, and we are going to go for the answer. Okay, sublimation, because this individual, she wanted to be a lawyer because she's typically outspoken and hard-headed in relationships. So why not get paid for doing it, right? So sublimation. Suppression is when you suppress something voluntary that's in the conscious state. You can suppress how you feel, suppress your feelings. Um, it's the opposite of um, repressed feelings, right? Repression is something that's automatic that you don't even know you do, and it's in the unconscious, right? Okay. Ford's view of human nature is that we are dynamic. Dynamic means we are A, ever-changing, B, Static, D, rebellious, or D, spiritual. Okay. If you had to choose which one, we choose. Ever changing, right? You could think of dynamics um, in group, like right? group dynamics always changing. The, dy the dynamic of the group is always changing day by day, right? And in human nature, we're doing that day by day. We change, right? We're ever changing individuals. So dynamic means there's an exchange of energy transforming, like a transformation that occurs. So when he talks about energy, um, I did a paper on this. Um, and Freud states that our emotions elicit some kind of energy, right? When someone says you're angry, you're giving off energy of being angry, right? That ways that come from inside our body that we are angry it comes from energy right so you can think about somebody saying you have negative energy or you have really great energy right a 68 year old woman is seeing you to help adjust to retirement you come to know that she has always wanted to be a teacher but worked all her life in the family according family accounting business given her stage of psychosocial development your best approach is A, to remind her how well she did in the accounting business. B, tell her she should look, well, tell her she should go back to graduate school. Some schools only require a graduate degree in education. 
so that it would only be two or three years of school and she could be teaching. C, to validate her, her despair, help her understand what value underlies the desire and help her to find a suitable alternative to professional teaching. D, tell her it's too late and to help her come to terms with that. If you chose C, you are correct, right? You want to validate this person's feeling. You want to, you know, help her understand in regards that, you know, you you don't you've done great, right? Um you you have been in retirement, right? And maybe teaching right now at such an older age might not be feasible because of all the college demand and how long it takes to be a teacher. So um maybe you could find something alternative that she can direct herself to that will be more feasible in regards to time. This woman is experienced in despair and helping her develop integrity. So this goes back to who? Eric, Eric, Eric Erickson, integrity versus despair. So integrity talks about being able to look back on my life and saying, I've done great with my life. I made some amazing choices, though I didn't make them all perfect. I, I look back at my life and I'm proud. Despair is what she's experienced. She's like, oh my God, I wanted to be a teacher, but I was an accountant. So your goal as a therapist is to say, you know what? I bet you were a great accountant. I bet you did amazing and people loved you. And I'm glad you, I bet you had great customers that really appreciate you working with them. But you also validate her feelings, which is also Carl Rogers, right? Unconditional positive regard. All right. Joe is a 65 year old um, and has worked 40 years for the same company, driving a tanker truck, delivering oil and Epsom long distance. Joe is diabetic and is experiencing problems with his vision and cannot handle being on the road. Joe is ready for retirement, but still wants to work part time. Joe's boss would like to keep him around because of his experience and transition him to dispatch where he gives delivery orders to other drivers. According to Super's theory of vocational development, what life stage is he in? A, growth. B, exploration. C, establishment. And D, maintenance. Okay. So A, he's not growing um, into his career. He already has his career, right? Exploration, he's not exploring career opportunities. Establishment, he's not trying to establish something. He already has it. So it would be D, maintenance. He's trying to maintain and hold on to that job. He's not looking for another job, not trying to establish himself somewhere else. Jack is a 62-year-old and because of a back injury, had to retire early from construction work. Jack feels in his mind, Jack feels his mind is still sharp, although he cannot do physical labor, intensive work. Jack has enrolled in accounting program at the local community college. What skill is Jack demonstrating? A, crystallization. B, career adaptability. C, identity processing. And D, vocational identification. All right. Career adapt adaptability, right? He's adapting his career to doing something else, right? So he's doing something and he's like putting himself out there, right? Mm -hmm. Career adaptability is ability to cope with the predictable tasks of preparing for and participating in the work role, as well as ability to cope with unpredictable adjustments prompt by changes in work or working conditions. The self-directed search blank. A uses computer technology. B does not require professional interpretation. C is based on Rose's work. And then you have D, which is answers A and B. Now keep in mind here, note, 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 
that the exam is not going to have two options for a choice and one answer. OK. So we know about Ro. Ro talks about unmet needs, intelligence, genetics. Um, that's how we choose our careers. Uh, if we look at the self-directed search, we talk about John Holland, the um, strong interest inventory of these six personality types, right? RISIC. So when, if you ever taken the RISIC, I believe I have INFJ. Mm -hmm. I'm an INFJ. And I use a computer because you have to, like, you have to use a computer in order to get it done, right? And then B does not require professional interpretation. Why? Because remember I said earlier that you could take that on your own, in your own time, and you get those answers right then and there. So if you had to choose, you would choose answer D, answers A and B, okay? Which is true about stability of Holland's type? A, they are stable over time, but not across gender and racial lines. B, they are stable across gender and racial lines, but not over time. C, they are stable over time and across gender and racial lines. D, they are not stable over time or across gender and racial lines. They are stable over time and cross and across gender and racial lines. Holland types are stable, right? Um, with 450 res research studies that supports that. Okay. Which of the following are developmental career theories? Okay. Developmental career theories. Okay. So we talked about Ginsburg before. What do we know about Ginsburg? He talks about what? Okay. So we can go back to Ginsburg if you don't know it. But we de definitely know Holland, right? We just talked about him. Um, then we have Donald Super, and then we have the option for A and C. So Ginsburg, just to go back to what he talks about the um, the theory and conclusion that occupational choice is not a single decision, but a development process which takes place over a period of ten or more years, right? Okay. So if you had to choose, who would you choose? Both A and C, right? Because you de you're developing, you're developing all those areas of your career. Um, so both Ginsburg and Super are developmental theorists. Holland is personality career. We just talked about that. All right, we're almost at fifty, and that will be the end of this almost ninety minute session. This is the longest one I've done. Um, Kelly is an 11 year old who likes to gather her friends and play school. When the play, well, when they play, they take turns being a teacher. And after her friends leave, Kelly tells her mother that she's going to be a second grade teacher when she grows up. According to Ginsburg's adolescence career developmental theory, Kelly is likely in which stage? A, curiosity stage, B, fantasy stage. And C, tentative stage, and D, realistic stage. Fantasy, right? Because they're quote unquote playing the teacher, right? She's playing make believe, right? Get uh, Kelly is in Ginsburg fantasy stage, which lasts, which lasts up to the age of twelve. This stage involves play and imagination and thinking about future work opportunities. Curiosity stage is not correct because Kelly is actively aware of what being a teacher is and is acting out her experience. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Right. 
This is the last one, you all. What game demonstrates a failure of object permanence in young infants? Object permanence. Um, I will give you the definition, but I don't want to give away the answer. So let's test your beliefs. So what game demonstrates a failure of object permanence in young infants? A, hide and seek. B, patty cake. C, peekaboo. And D, blowing a kiss. All right. Almost time up. Peekaboo, right? So imagine if you're playing peekaboo with a child and their failure to have object permanence. Object permanence means to know that just because I can't see something does not mean I don't know it's there. But peekaboo is a good example because a child would think the, the mom is gone, even though the body is in full view. It's just that the, the hands is over the face. If a child has object permanence, they're able to move their adult hand and be like, I know you're right there. And some babies might cry if you put your hands in front of your face because they think you're gone. All right, so that concludes this review of areas of clinical focus, this information. Um, this question, the, the question review is from chess.com. So uh, thank you for taking time out to listen. I really do appreciate it. And make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. That would be a great and amazing. We hit the 500 mark. I'm so proud. <laughs> so, um, but yes, thank you again. I appreciate it. And I will be posting another video later on this week.